of the New Testament, tree in Greek, and eat. This tree comes under another name called agathos, A-G-A-T-H-O-S. It's a primary word meaning good in any sense, benefit, goods, and things. Now, this, this tree represents the... See, I have to give it all to you. Slow down a little bit. This, <laughs> this tree in the Greek language, agathos, means goods, material goods, and things. Material things. So this is the first revelation of materialism as relates to this tree. Remember, this is not something I'm making up. This is something that is researched, verified. You can verify it by your studies, just as I am. You can look these work, words up uh, in the Greek language and in the, the Bible, uh, concordance, etc. all the tools I've given you, just as I have done. It just requires a great deal of diligence if you want to try to find it. I found it for you. You can go back and verify it. Fine. In the meantime, you have it. Another uh, definition for tree in the Greek language is agrielios. A G R E E E L A H Y O S. One word. Agrielios. And guess what it means? Wild. W I L D. Wild. Speaks of an olive tree, but which is wild. So here's a, a tree that produces wild people. <laughs> Yet they speak of cultivation. They cultivate you to become wild. Agrios is another Greek word. It means wild. Agrios. Wild. As pertaining to a country. Also means fierce and raging. That's what this tree is. It's fierce. It represents fierce and raging, a country which is wild, fierce, and raging. The people in the country are wild, fierce, and raging, and all who eat of this tree of good and evil become wild, fierce, and raging, and that's what you see going on in our country and in the earth today. Wars, rumors of wars, destruction, panic, chaos, hunger, sorrow, tears, death. It's all defined right here, clear. But you never thought to look it up. I've done it for you. Now you can come and study it and go into greater detail. Then I have time to do so here. I don't have the time. My, I'm suffering from a constraint of time. But I put you on the path, and I give you the clear facts. And I reveal the sons of perdition. I'm revealing Satan, that old serpent, from his beginning with you in the garden. And our holy feast teaches us these things. That's what they teach, what I'm sharing with you. Our holy feast teaches us that every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, gotten drunk, then the wine which is worse is served. <laughs> hey, why waste good wine? I mean, you can't taste it and appreciate it anyway. You're too drunk to appreciate good wine. It doesn't make a difference what you take in. That's what that message is. Our Holy Feast teaches us to have respect for others. Now, we're going to take a look for a second at the word eat. The word eat. And it means to refresh the inner man. It means to show enthusiasm for. You get that from your Old Testament and New. To show enthusiasm for. To take pleasure in. To believe without question. That's what the tree of good and evil does. It teaches you to believe without question. That's, that's how uh, Lucifer came to Eve. He, he, he came to her in such a manner, approaching the law. Did not Yahweh say, I shall not eat of the tree in the midst of the garden? Then Eve went on and told him all about it. You see? Uh, and when he got through talking smoothly about what Yahweh said, and then he, just, he was able to beguile her and, and speak directly against what Yahweh said. And, and she believed him without question. Once she begins to entertain his ideas, entertain his ways, entertain and experience in her mind his ideas, once she did that, his whole game plan is that you trust him and believe him without question. And that's the way you go to school. He, he teaches you to question within the spectrum of his circle, not to question him as the authority, not to question the source of his information. He teaches you to uh, go to the library, and when you uh, do a paper, he, he 
requires you to do uh, a bibliography and, 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 and to give credit to some author. Who is the author? A writer from the tree of good and evil. One who are already uh, a descendant of Lucifer. Not just this angel, but actually a descendant of Lucifer. Lucifer is thought in mindset. You accept them as the authority without question. You're taught not to question beyond the authority. If you, if you don't like this particular writer or author, then you go and get another author. But you must get some author that you quote from for your paper, your thesis, your dissertation, your term paper. And then you are to believe without question. If you question him, you just pick another one. So you end up still being a vessel groomed for corruption, fashioned for corruption. And eat means to believe without question. Believe Lucifer without question. And food, of course, meant food for thought. So that's a spiritual thing. So right away we see that it was an intellectual thing going on in the garden, not somebody eating an apple like they paint on uh, pictures. That's a known open deception like Santa Claus and the reindeer flying in the air. Now the next shock is, and I mean shock, eat means word, W-O-R-D. In your deep research it tells you when, you, when you're studying eat, it says see word. You have to go to the Hebrew on word. Imagine that. What a shock. So now you see, it's not just eat as you think about food. It's talking about eating, consuming, taking in words that are food for thought. Now what is the word? according to all this information given in the scriptures. It's a unit of language, speech or talk, especially when insincere. You hear that? Eat in relationship to this tree means especially a speech or talk that is especially insincere or vacuous. A warrant, assurance, or promise. He made many. It, it's defined as news. And you know what kind of news they give you? It's all negative. Information. Information is always false. A verbal signal. Now, when it comes to the word from the tree of life, it's not just called word or just called eat. It's called the word of Yudhe The word of God is called logos or the message of the gospel of Yudhe Wave. And in that side, from the tree of life, it's referred to accept someone's promise or assertion as sincere or true, but at the same time, Yahweh gives you proof of what he has always done in the past and what he's doing now, and that's why you can trust him in the future. Satan never gave any promises of anything except falsehood. Now, uh, a further definition of word is defined as a word gain, which equals skill at changing the truth. <laughs> I almost went into shock as I began to see that this is actually written in black and white. Skill at changing the truth. Uh, it's further, uh, further terms are uh, name, expression, ideogram, word is defined as hieroglyphic, linguistic, word is defined as morpheme, and etimon, word is described as symbol, representation, and sign. Word is also defined as pledge, a solemn word, a word of honor, a guarantee. Word is defined as tidings and report. Word is defined as communication, account, and data, and intelligence. Low down, and get ready for this one, dirt, D-I-R-T. You notice that this, that the gods of this world, the rulers of this world, those who control television, they always are printing the dirt, publishing dirt dirt on somebody, somebody's character, something low. Word is also defined as order, command, and dictate, dictum, and instruction. This is what, what is received from this tree of good and evil. Direction, behest, ultimatum, commandments, will, and prescripts, and prescriptions, and ordainment. Words from the tree of good and evil is, is defined as rules, and laws, and edicts mandates and proclamations. So you don't have Yahweh's laws, you have man's laws. And admonitions, injunctions, charges, exhortations, and bidding. Words from the 
and the tree of good and evil are also uh, defined as addresses and phrases, uh, utterances, descriptions, and terms, and style. Now, the next uh, shock of, of word is, is the term word play. Now, now this is actually used uh, by Satan, by Lucifer, and was used by Lucifer in the garden of all Eve. And she, like, remember, she learned this. She took this into her mind, and, and she learned this, and we used all of this, what I'm about to share with you, on Adam. Now, here's what uh, Lucifer used on, uh, he used word, word play on Eve, which means uh, he equivocated. And to equivocate means to use ambiguous or unclear expressions, usually to avoid a direct answer or in order to mislead. Now, we know he certainly succeeded. So Satan was the master of equivocation. And part E, how to equi become an equate, you know, equivocator. And this tool is used upon us uh, right today. This, it's going to be used upon us, and it's being used upon us from little children right now. Now, another wordplay game from the tree of good and evil is paronomasia. Paronomasia, spelled P-A-R-O-N-O-M-A-S-I-A, which means a play on words or a pun. Now, what is a pun? A pun is described as the humorous use of a word or a combination of words so as to emphasize different meaning or application or the use of words that are alike or nearly alike in sound but different in meaning, which is a play on words. To make puns is to mistreat words. Now, I was never taught this in school. I worked my way all the way, all the way through a master's degree with the law school, and I was never taught this about words. You were not either. But Satan and his descendants have full knowledge of what I'm saying here. And they use it every day. And the journalists use it every single day. Another uh, word play or another game uh, described for uh, words or eat from the tree of good and evil is an anagram. An anagram is the transposition of the letters of a word or phrase to form a new word. And becomes an anagram is the new word that is formed from transposition of letters or words or phrases. Change it right in your face and you don't know what that means. Another word is acrostic, A-C-R-O-S-T-I-C, which is a series of written lines or verses in which the first, the last, or other particular letters form a word or a phrase. The alphabet, so a, a crostical, it means deliberately forming an acrostic in which the first, the last, and other particular letters form a word, and uh, that's a secret for you. That's, that's cryptography, uh, cryptology is being used on you here. Another uh, game from the trio of, of good and evil is word squares, where that's a set of words such that when arranged one beneath another in the form of a square, they read alike, horizontally and vertically. Some of these things are kind of used like tricks for little games for you to play, but you're not taught the secret, secret of word squares and how they're formed. And another one that they use on in your face from the tree of good and evil, and remember this research leads directly. This is not something I'm making up or putting together. This is directly from the research here is uh, put before the public on a daily basis, and you've never known it's from the tree of good and evil, is the crossword puzzle. Yes, crossword puzzle. You've never studied that. You may have played with crossword puzzle, <laughs> but you've never understood what it is. A crossword puzzle is to dramatize a lesson to Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the descendants of Cain, that to dramatize a puzzle. A puzzle is in which words corresponding to numbered clues, numbered clues or definitions are fitted into a pattern of horizontal and vertical squares so that most letters form part of two words. A puzzle is a contrivance 
A puzzle is a plan or scheme designed to amuse by presenting difficulties to be solved by ingenuity or patient effort. You've never been taught to do it, to create puzzles and for a purpose with a plan and a scheme designed to take the possession of another because that's what Lucifer succeeded in doing to Eve and Adam. They, he got them kicked out of that possession of the Garden of Eden. 